What up, nerds? My name is Leslie Smith. Welcome to The Nerdy Narrative, a channel where I like to talk about reading. Everything. Just whatever. It's all covered here now at this point. I just keep getting sucked in to all these different channels that I subscribe to from different genres, and then I'll start reading those genres, and I used to be like, oh, I like to read science fiction, fantasy, horror, manga, nonfiction. It's just what it is, okay? We just want to talk about reading here. <laughs> Today is going to be a little review about The Patience of a Dead Man by Michael Clark. This is one of the reviews that if you comment down below after you watch it, you do get an extra entry in the giveaway that I'm doing this month. If you're new and you need more information on that, check up in the cards. I'm going to put a link to the video that gives you all of those details so you're not too late you can still get in for a chance to win. So I still have a couple of books left on my Spooktober TBR, but I feel pretty confident in saying The Patience of a Dead Man is going to be my top favorite number one read of the month of everything. It was phenomenal. I had no idea this was Michael Clark's debut novel. It was so well written. It's going to be my unit of measurement regarding horror stories in the future because, you know, I immediately went to Brad Proctor. I was like, any book you read that is similar to this one, I need to know immediately. This is what I'm looking for. When I say I want to read a scary story, this is what I'm looking for. It's the type of ghost story that it's more scary with what you don't see, if that makes sense. For instance, you hear footsteps on stairs and you know there's 12 stairs and you hear 11 steps climbing the stairs and then they stop and you know one more step is going to put them at the top of the stairs where you could possibly look out and see who or what it is but it just waits and it's just silent. That's the type of scariness I like that I just thrive on. I'm addicted to even though it scares the absolute stuffing out of me. This book scared the shit out of me. I'm not gonna lie to you. I had bad dreams every night that I read it. Every sound that my house made was just was amplified. I mean it's not fair because half the time I can't hear anything. But I read this book and it's just like I became hypersensitive to every sound. One time I was reading a scene and my ice maker dumped a load of ice. Chris just about had to pull me down off the ceiling. It was that bad. I mean, I just had headaches from my eyes hurting because I would just stare so hard into any shadowy corner to make sure nothing was there. The, this book was amazing. Okay, it was amazing. I think I'm done gushing enough. I can give you some information about this book to see if it's one you might be interested in picking up. So obviously from my gushing that you just listened to, it's a very thrilling horror story. As I mentioned earlier, it is Michael Clark's debut novel. It is also book one of a trilogy, which I am so excited about. I am so happy that there are two more books in this storyline. I did read the Kindle version of The Patience of a Dead Man, which is probably a good thing. If I had purchased the physical book, I would have likely gone ahead and gotten the entire trilogy. Then the rest of my TBR and plans for the month would have just gone out the window because I would have binged the entire series. Another thing that I love about scary stories is when there is a little tiny nugget of truth to the story. And so in this case, Michael Clark was actually raised in New Hampshire and he lived in the house that The Patience of the Dead Man is based on. Another little fun fact, the woman that is on the cover of these books is Michael Clark's wife. For me, that just lends a little something extra to the story. I don't know why. I can't explain that. It just does. So to briefly summarize the plot for you so you can see if this might be something you're interested in, this is a story about Tim Russell. Now, Tim is just not having a good time right now. He's just come out on the losing end of a really nasty divorce. He has his own construction business, but he had to sell off most of his equipment and tools. It's just down to him and another guy. He's trying to rebuild it from scratch because the previous business was under him and his wife. And then of course that had to get split and had to buy her out. He's also kind of wondering, 
what's next? Do I, how do I get back into the dating world? Because he's still young enough to want to put himself back out there, but he feels old enough that he's not sure where to start or how to do it. You're immediately drawn to Tim. You just feel sorry for him and you're just wanting to see him dig his way out of the hole that he's in. Tim gives it some thought. There's an area in New Hampshire that he always loved. His plan is to find a nice fixer upper with some land, flip it for a profit to hopefully get some seed money to start rebuilding his construction business. Cause he just really doesn't have the desire to work for someone else. He enjoyed being his own boss. He liked doing what he did. Like I said, and so his goal is to flip a house, make some quick money and get going. So with the help of a cute little real estate agent named Holly, Tim is able to find the house and it's a really great deal. Holly does tell him that the previous owner died in the house. She died in her sleep. So she's upfront about that. And it's kind of like when you know about a trigger warning in a book, if you know about it ahead of time, you're able to confront it head on and deal with it. But with the house being over a hundred years old, there's probably more than one person that died in it. So Tim's like, all right, cool. I can deal. I can deal. Throughout the, the closing on the home, Tim and Holly are kind of almost flirting. So, you know, that's kind of got him interested and thinking about that. And then now that he's made the decision on the house, he's feeling good about it. So life and things are looking up for Tim until he realizes that he is not the only occupant of this farmhouse. And that's where things take off. And that is where this story just starts building and evolving. I noticed there were some things that happened that had me questioning, like, wait a minute, how can that, but oh my gosh, oh my gosh. This was everything, everything I could ever want in a scary story. There were so many things that you didn't see, but was just described in a way that you felt it. My heart was pounding. I was so scared reading this book, but I was so addicted to what was going on and the type of fear that it was evoking in me. And I just couldn't stop reading it. I couldn't put it down. It was phenomenal. I am so thankful to Brad Proctor for recommending that one to me. There, there's so much more I want to tell you, but I don't want to spoil any part of it. It is a fantastic story. The mystery, the things that happen and the journey of trying to figure out who and what is going on, what's causing it, what can we do to fix it? Do we just run for the hills and leave or can they? You know, there's nothing to say that a ghost or something for another realm, if it's haunting you or after you, there is nothing that says it's stuck in one spot, is it? If you're someone who loves a good ghost story or a supernatural tale that just grips you in its jaws and doesn't let you go to the point where you stop breathing to listen as hard as you can to what that sound was. Was that a fly buzzing? A book that you just can't put it down even though you know it's going to keep you up at night. This is that book for you. I just thought it was so well written. It was so descriptive. I felt like I was living it. I just can't ask for more than that. On Goodreads, this book currently has 249 ratings with an average star rating of 4.29. I gave this sucker five stars. When I am that invested in a book, when I can't put it down, when I am living in that world, when I am also affected in the real world by it, and I just can't focus on anything else, that level of enjoyment merits a full five star rating from me and I was happy to give it. If you've read this book, I would love to talk to you down below in the comments or on Discord. I have some theories. I can't wait to read the other two. Have you read the whole trilogy? Are the other two books as good as this one? Please hit me up down below and let me know. If you've read this book or this trilogy and you have others like it you can recommend me, I need this information. 
I need it now. So hit me up down below, let me know. Or if you ha if you haven't read it, but you have a favorite ghost story book that you can recommend, I'd love to get that title from you as well. Guys, thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you pick this book up. If you don't pick up any other book I've talked about this month, this is the one, guys. This is the one. Hear me when I tell you this book is phenomenal. Have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you.